and action. Hey everyone, Benjamin had a question about burnout. Well, actually, he had a question about feeling down. Um, for all intents and purposes, that would be burnout. And this is actually probably more of a video for me too because I haven't done too many videos lately because I too am feeling burned out. Now the concept, of, there, there is no definition for burnout. I mean, there is a Dr. Frudenberg back in the 70s who came up with the concept or the name and he coined it for healthcare workers. Healthcare workers who would spend a lot of time, uh, give in a lot of self-sacrifice, and uh, actually take time out of their own personal lives and feel a level of exhaustion. So that's the commonplace uh, symptom of this burnout is feeling exhaustion. Now there's a, there's a fine line between burnout and depression. Depression, there's levels or uh, a diagnosis of low self-esteem, suicidal ideation, uh, hopelessness. In burnout, which is usually job-related, you might have a great productivity, uh, dedicated 60 hours, 70 hours a week, especially my small business owners, or my doctors, uh, physical therapists, nurses, psychologists, phys uh, uh, anybody that owns their own business, and the, obviously the reward is great because you own your own business. You can control your own hours, even though your hours are like 60 hours a week. The, the tipping point with uh, hours of work is that when you hit the 50 hour a week mark, that cuts into, that's almost all your free time five days a week. Granted, you can have a Saturday and a Sunday on your own, but that's usually catch up time for all those hours that you weren't with your family or you have to take care of bills or you got to take care of the house. Now, sometimes what some people will do is rob Peter to pay Paul. So they'll try to squeeze out 60 to 70 hours a week, but they'll take a little bit of time from their sleep and then put it over into the work. That won't work long term because the brain and its problem solving skills is dependent on a good night's sleep. And yes, everybody needs about eight hours of sleep and there's some people who fall below the curve or above the curve. Once you start skimping on your sleep hours and you start putting it more into your work, it's only a matter of time before you get sick or before your mental anguish becomes burned out. So a lot of people will just feel so exhausted because of all of the dedicated time they're doing to the regime or the routine. And it does get a little frustrating. Sometimes when the morale drops, it's due to the fact that there's no more reward. A lot of healthcare workers back in the 70s would find that it's very, it's very rewarding to be able to help fellow man. But that kind of goes out the window when you're being battered, when you're being beat up, when you're being abused. And again, the concept of those few words depends on how the individual sees his position in the world. Uh, when you are molding your own, uh, uh, your own job or your own business, it seems like it's worth it. But after a while, when it just seems like the reward is kind of cutting down and the amount of work is kind of bringing up, uh, it, it will outrun itself. So then you'll wind up with this concept of burnout. So if you or if you have a loved one that is starting to be socially withdrawn, uh, kind of getting a little short-tempered, uh, not interacting anymore, there could very well be a depression issue. And it's very easy to do that. Sometimes social withdrawal because you just don't have time to talk because you're just so busy working uh, it, it does affect you after a while and Granted if you um, are good with what you do and you serve mankind and you do 60 hours a week But you have to take away not only sleep hours, but you also take away from exercise hours well, that's where my young guys uh, or my athletes my ex-athletes usually start to go downhill so in Benjamin's case, we start uh, to, well, we're at the verge of having to compromise exercise. But here's the thing, and it might not be just for Benjamin, it might be for a lot of other small business owners. When you do 60 hours a week of work, 
and then you have a family that you're supposed to be present for, whether you, your spouse raises the family or does all of the raising, or whether you have to contribute and take uh, tag team the, taking care of the kids, you got to be present. So you have to do some kind of input, be hello, how you doing kind of thing. It's always nice, and that's how European and Asian families usually get by with the stress reduction and the longevity till 80 years of age, is the family eats together for dinner. I, it sounds like a very stupid concept in the United States, but it makes a big difference in parts of the world where people live to 103. So I think it's very important to have the family bonding. When you're not there for dinner, <clears throat> uh, you can get your hours taken care of. You'll put a lot of hours at the office, but those little ones will be suffering because they will remember not seeing dad around. I remember my father was ob gyn so he always was at the hospital. I might or might not see him for dinner. In fact, I don't remember seeing him for dinner that often, maybe on a Sunday or a Saturday. But I remember as I was going upstairs for bed, I'd see him walking into the door with his jacket, his hat on, um, and coming from the hospital. He was ob gyn so he used to sleep at the hospital. So <clears throat> it, it, I don't know whether, it, I'm sure it affected my childhood and the way I was uh, what be, uh, became a man, but... Um, I think the best families, the best outcomes are usually when both parents are around. So you have to you have to be around for some kind of interaction. You also have to exercise too. Now, if you're used to in your 20s, in my 20s, hour to two hours of exercise per day, five days a week. That's awesome. That's impossible now, though. So uh, I just pray that I can have 20 to 30 minutes, three to four days a week. <clears throat> And that's nothing compared to before, but here's the thing, and I'm not going to get into this whole detail, the detail of this thing now, but if you can get to a level of uh, athletic excellence or athletic activity where you can get your muscle mass, get your cardiovascular, you can maintain that with very little exercise or just the right amount of exercise so you don't lose it. So that's, I think, where I am at this point in time, but I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get to this point in my 20s, 30s, and 40s. So now in my 50s, it's paying off. I just spend 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, three to four days a week, and that'll maintain me. Not as big as when I was 20, but this will do me good, better than my colleagues at the age of 55 or in their mid-50s. So you have to have some form of exercise. If you kind of tank on the exercise because you just put in a lot of activity at work, you're going to suffer eventually because you have to move. You have to exercise. I don't care if your work involves a lot of labor. You have to do some form of non-work exercise because the brain will experience it. The muscles will experience it. You have to do that no matter what. Whether it's just the skimpiest amount, 15 to 30 minutes, three days to five days a week, or it's more than that, I don't care. But you have to do something. You can't neglect that. You can't neglect sleep and you can't neglect your family. Now, with all that having been said, you have to try to somehow get 60 hours of work weekend. It's difficult, uh, no question. But here's my theory. For most Americans, we don't have a mindful practice. I think a mindful practice will slow down the brain, get it ready for the stressors of the day, so that when the stress response is initiated, whether it's because of paying taxes or you're driving because you work for FedEx and somebody cuts you off or somebody at work calls in sick, whatever it is, one of your employees, whatever it is, if you have a mindful practice, you're set for the stress response because you've already answered it. You don't wait for the stress response to come up. You've already answered it because you have a relaxation practice. When you have a relaxation practice, your calm is there, so that when the stress comes up, it's already been neutralized with the calm. And then your problem solving is fast. When you're stressed out, problem solving is a little bit difficult, and it takes more time. You gotta read the paragraph a couple times, you gotta read through the instructions a couple times, you gotta hear what's going on so you can problem solve. When you're calm, you can do that faster. And if you have to problem solve 30 minutes, every 30 minutes for an eight hour or a 10 to 12 hour work day, you can imagine how fast you can problem solve, get it done, over with, next problem, so you can get out of work faster. 
If you're tired, if you're hungry, if you're stressed out, it'll take you so much longer to problem solve. You'll extend your day. You won't you'll rob yourself of the ex your, your family. You'll rob yourself of the sleep. You'll rob yourself of the exercise. You see the positive that can come when you relax. So I, I highly value mindful practice. I highly value occasional vacation times or occasional withdrawal. Uh, I think it's important to have that weekend. You know, Seventh Day Adventist, if you look at uh, Dan Buettner's book, he found several places in the world where people reached 100 years of age. One of them, believe it or not, was in the United States, and that was a Seventh Day Adventist because they kept the seventh day, Sunday, as their day of rejoicing, being in nature. They also practice a whole food, mostly plant-based diet. But usually you'll find in all of the U.S., in all of the world, the Seventh-day Adventists made it to 100. And why is that? It's probably because of their lifestyle. But they usually would reserve one day for just relaxing, being with the family. And that's why I think it's important. If you are feeling uh, some symptoms of being burned out, if you're noting a, noticing a spouse is feeling a little burned out or acting a little bit goofy or a little bit weird, it's important to address that possibility. Withdraw from the work. I mean, work will always be there, no matter what. But if you take some time off, you can kind of reset your goals, establish what you're doing in this position, and then get back to work with more vigor, more energy. So if that doesn't work, then it might be necessary to see one of us, an MD, a DO, get a workup. Maybe it's a thyroid problem. Maybe it's a diabetes problem. Maybe you do have adrenal burnout, like James Wilson had put in his book. Uh, or you need a psychologist to help calm down and, and develop your own stress relaxation problem uh, or stress and or relaxation neutralization technique. But whatever you do, even if you have your own, try to realize that there is a, an answer for being burned out. There is a definition of being burned out. It's a little bit loose. There's also a definition for depression too. But we want to catch this thing before it gets to that level. So it's worth it to seek out help. You're not, you're not a wimp for doing it. You're not uh, uh, any the less of a person for having that. A lot of people go through it. If you think about it, burnout or depression can happen when you lose a pet, when you lose a job, when you break up with a, a spouse, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, when you fail a test, when you don't uh, win in a game. All of these things can happen, so it's really common. Uh, the problem is if you're a provider and everybody's depending on you, if you kind of fade, everybody will suffer too. So uh, hopefully this helps. If this is the first time you're finding me, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for other future videos. And uh, uh, put your comments down below because uh, other people might be able to benefit from it. So thanks for listening.